Hello everyone, welcome to this webinar for performance management uh, for June 24 attempt. And this is your instructor, Rizwan Mani. I hope you all are well and excited for this webinar. Uh, kindly guys, can you quickly uh, update me in the chat box in relation to is my voice audible, clear, video, perfectly fine, everything, please. I need the confirmations from all of you. Okay. Thank you very much for the confirmation. So, guys, are you excited for this two days or important Game Changer webinar? And be ready to really be with me for the two days and see the results, then what how it will help you. So, one thing that you have to make sure that you have to be with me for complete two days. Are you ready? Yes or no? Thank you very much for the confirmation again. Let's begin. This September Game Changer webinar will be targeting the important areas, areas where people struggle. Uh, so this can benefit them, obviously. And uh, we'll be doing a lot of practice of the new questions as well, which will further give you the guidance as to what needs to be done from examination point of view. The person you can see two times in one frame right now is Rizwan Mania. And I teach paper PM, FM and uh, Advanced Performance Engineer APM. I've been into this teaching since more than 16 years and I've taught lots and lots of students locally, internationally. And the best thing is that I've conducted, the, there are two best things I would say. Number one, I've conducted lots and lots of webinars for ACC and other brand name of P2P. And also I have conducted uh, webinars for PM and APM, both for ACCA Pakistan. Uh, from the WIFIS platform, we always conduct webinars every time and that is also very important for you people. Plus, my students have secured 40 plus nationwide positions in these papers. So, I can proudly say that for all these papers, 40 plus positions have been secured by my students. So, I want you to be the next position holder and let's use this webinar uh, and make sure that you pass and with good numbers, okay? Uh, how to remain connected with me after the webinar. I'm the principal at WIFI. So being the principal in the capacity of the principal, I'm sharing this number with you people. Uh, so you can contact me for any guidance, help, anything you, that you want. So you can take the help uh, in relation to general guidance. But for paper related guidance, you have to uh, connect with us uh, through our WhatsApp groups. I'll just mention that very soon uh, so for all the subject related queries uh, there is a whatsapp group that we'll be sharing with you people you can be part of that free group that can be very useful for you uh, this is the group where you will find a lot of apm students globally where i'll be there as well to help you and those students will also be uh, uh, good enough and kind enough to help you so i'll ask my team to please whatsapp uh, sorry Please uh, message the group link in the chat box. Uh, admin, can you please uh, share the group link in the chat box? Uh, if you can share the group link so people can join the group. This is a group where I'll be sharing all the webinar related materials as well, uh, further guidance. And I'll be very much active in this group to help you till the last day of the examination. The team has shared the link. You can join the link uh, and definitely you can take the benefit of that. Okay. Now, those students who will join later on, uh, they are not right now in the live class, uh, they'll join later on, will watch the recording. So if they need the group link, they can contact the support number that is available right at the below. Here it is, the support number, and they will share you the group link with you people later on as well, so that you can take the benefit as well. You can contact me for any help, guidance if you want, that also will be useful for you. Uh, so now how to remain connected during the webinar so you can see the chat box is available where you just gave me the confirmations we'll be interacting using this chat box throughout the webinar right oh now the passing ratio of pm always a big debate i would say so the passing ratio of pm for the last attempt of june 24 was 42 percent uh, a three percent dip in the passing ratio compared to march 24 so it did went three percent down but i would say 
that still it's it's on a higher side uh, compared to PM past practice where the passing ratio was below 40. So that's a bit a positive thing for me as a tutor of PM that it's at least now above the 40% ratio. Okay. Types of students who are appearing in September 24 that you will confirm me right now. Please, can you please uh, uh, write in the chat box who are studying or appearing for the first time? So, first timers, please, can you just message here in the chat box? I just want to know the quantum of the student. First timers, please just mention in the chat box. Wow. <clears throat> so many students are appearing for the first time in PM. So, first timers, the message is simple. Stay calm, composed, think positive, nothing negative should come into your mind and you have to follow the plans, okay, that I'll be sharing in this webinar as well. Now, the students who are giving the re-attempt, now please they can mention here, the re-attempt students, okay, so the re-attempt students <coughs> are also uh, in good numbers compared to the regular students and uh, <clears throat> the attempt student the message is simple uh, learn from your mistakes whatever mistakes you have done in the past learn from the mistakes and uh, again you have to be very much positive very very much positive don't your old thoughts come to your mind and disturb you okay now uh, one more thing before I proceed, a, a quick response I again need from you people, students who are, who are taking classes, who are in the session right now from different countries, just mention the country name, just wanted to check that from different places, which countries you belong to, so just mention here please. Okay, so it's Pakistan, India, very much populated here with a bit of UK, Nepal, I can see in good numbers, very nice, Botswana, African countries, uh, so it's a good mix, Ireland I can see a lot here, so yeah, that's great, so students are taking classes from different parts of the world right now and let's, uh, let's, let's make sure that you take benefit from these webinars, I'll make sure that I give my best, best, best for you people so that you can take benefit and it helps you to pass. Uh, once we are done with the session, do not forget to give the feedback in the comment section as to how this session helped you. This is very valuable, very important for us because I do gauge myself from these, okay? Right. Now, preparing for the exams, there are certain important tips. Number one, PM syllabus. Topics that are in PM syllabus as well as MA will continue to be examined, okay? So, topics like absorption costing, the, the advance is A, B, C, standard costing, the advance variance that we see here, budgets, performance measurement. So, there are a lot of topics that are very much connected to your MA. So, you have to have a good knowledge of those. Now, yes, uh, you don't ha have to pressurize yourself like this. Okay, I have to revise the previous material. No, 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 nothing like that. Just keep it simple. Just make sure you had the basics in your mind in relation to the previous paper. Not very much. The current paper is what you have to focus more on. Okay. Now, second thing is it's very important that uh, the students should understand the questions will reflect the real world scenarios. Okay. So, uh, the, the, the recent things that are happening uh, because the world is changing, it's more competitive environment, new techniques are being introduced. So, uh, you have to keep in your mind that these scenarios uh, that you will face in the examination will be real world scenarios, okay. Then you have uh, a very important area to cover that is information system developments in technology. That is one thing that you should read all the self-study students, uh, make sure that they do read this. I'll just mark this topic from the study hub as well. Uh, so, you have to read this topic because you can expect three to four OTs coming from this area, okay. After that, it's very important to understand the last point which says develop business awareness, okay. Uh, many business problems and performance management questions can be solved using common sense, which is not so common in common people, 
I don't know whether it's true or false, but common sense is very important. So, guys, you please you don't be so much uh, nervous because of the nervousness. You spoil things. You spoil things. Okay. So make sure that you use your common sense and uh, make sure that whatever you write should make sense, should be related to the exam. Anything that you do, stay calm and composed and make sure that you do respond according to the requirement. Okay. Done. Paper structure. Uh, everybody do have the idea, but for the first timers, specifically for them, I'm mentioning here that section A of your exam will include 15 objective test questions. Each will have a weightage of two marks. So that is 30 marks isolated OTs. 15 OTs will be tested here and you have to make sure that you do uh, focus on those 15 and at least you have to make sure that <clears throat> out of those 15, your 7 to 8, 8 in fact, not 7, 8 to 9 OTs minimum should be correct. Minimum should be correct, okay, to pass in this particular section. Secondly, section B will include three case studies. Uh, each case study will comprise of 10 marks uh, question, a scenario followed by five OTs. So like there, this, there were three OTs and 30 marks will be assigned to this. Section C will be two constructive response question. We have to construct the responses and this will have a weightage of 40 marks where you do need to have a basic skill of using spreadsheet and word processor okay now the topics that will be tested in the examination the summary is here uh, advanced costing technique will not be tested in section c crqs but there is one area where they can test you is <coughs> the ema topic environmental management accounting area now they have mentioned that they can test EMA theory in section C, CRQs. Other than that, the four will not be tested <coughs> in CRQs. Uh, so you have to keep this in your mind. The rest all can be tested in CRQs. So it's ABC, target life cycle throughput that will not be tested. But some part of EMA one can expect to come in section C. Okay. Uh, other than that, it's obvious, very clear. You can see that exam comes from any area. Examiner never uh, uh, goes for a situation of pick uh, the hot areas or the most favorite areas. No, it's not that you can be tested. You'll be tested from any area, especially when it comes to section A. So you have to make sure, make sure, make sure that you cover each and everything uh, in section A. Okay, now uh, how EMA will be tested for theory only, I would say for theoretical area, for theoretical knowledge, they may test you for uh, uh, EMA in section C, especially for sustainability, for environmental things uh, that they can test in section C theory. Okay, done. <clears throat> Now, scope of the webinar is 20% knowledge based, 80% practice based is what I always follow. Uh, I'll be focusing on section A, B and C uh, throughout the two days of webinar. Uh, ACC platform definitely will be used. Uh, we'll focus on drafting the uh, answers that are CRQs. The, uh, so answer drafting will be done. And this is the scope of the two days webinar. Okay. Now, webinar day wise plan, guys. Section day one, section C and section B will be targeting tomorrow. Section C and B and A, three will be targeting tomorrow. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, these are the two days which are free for you people. Uh, congratulations. But the third day is unfortunately not free. The third day is grand revision, which is paid. Uh, uh, session and this is part of your revision batch. So any student who enrolls with us for the revision batch, they will benefit from three things. Number one, they will get the pre-recorded content, uh, pre-recorded content of important areas, important 20 to 25 topics that I think are important for the exam. They will be getting 
the access of those pre-recorded content uh, that is uh, the, the, the knowledge based lectures and the fast paper videos of that as well. Okay, so the practice content will be available as well. Plus, you can benefit from two live, sorry, two mocks uh, where one will be a live mock uh, and I'll conduct a live debrief of that as well. And also we will check that mock and we'll give you the feedback of that. The another mock is a complimentary mock that you will do on your own and uh, you will get a recorded debrief of that. Okay. Third thing is the grand revision that you will be part of. Now, this is very important. This grand revision is very crucial uh, because I'll revise uh, the PM uh, in few hours for you. So, that it will be a good conceptual base revision for you. Okay. So, these three are part of the revision batch. Now, those students who are part of my normal batch or the reset batch or they have already joined the revision batch for all of the three, it's free. You don't have to enroll for any other batch. Uh, so, I just wanted to avoid this confusion. But those who are doing self-study, they want to target the key areas, 20, 25 important topics that they want to target. This revision batch is what you can join. You can cover the pre-recorded content, the past papers of that. Plus, you will be part of the two marks and the grand revision to give you a boost uh, before the examination that can help you to pass. So, those students who are doing self-study are recommended to join this what's uh, this uh, revision batch. This is the WhatsApp number of our team. You can contact them, take the details, and they'll share the details with you for the registration. The most important thing is the mock that will be marked for you and the feedback that you will get that will be the most important thing. Okay. Okay. Done. So I hope this is clear uh, as far as the two days plan is concerned, the free ones and the paid one. Uh, so that's it. Moving towards the smart paper solving technique that I always focus a lot and that is you have to find easy marks. Where are the easy marks? Throughout these two days of the practice, I'll tell you section A, section B, section C all includes easy marks. So we'll focus on that. Secondly, uh, it is very important that you do understand the important examinable verbs uh, for CRQs like discuss, explain, justify, briefly discuss, assess, evaluate. Things like these you should know. The verbs are very important. So you go to the Wifi's YouTube channel and do watch this video to understand the basic meaning of the verbs, which is very crucial, very crucial, because I always say the students keep it very simple in their lives. And that is for them briefly assess, uh, for them describe, for them explain, for them state, all means the same. That's wrong. Okay. <clears throat> then, you have to watch another video which is by the name of Smart Paper Solving Technique available on Wifi's YouTube channel. If you haven't seen it, if you are new to my world, so you watch this video because it will help you to grab minimum 50 marks to pass the paper. What you want at the end of the day, guys? Do you want to pass? Say yes or no. Yes or no, guys? Do you want to pass? Come on, this is not the level of interaction I want you people. Quickly, I need the responses. You need to pass. If you need to pass, you need minimum how much? Minimum 50. Minimum 50. To grab minimum 50, this video should help you. So go to the UVF YouTube channel and search Smart Paper Solving Technique for PM and FM and you will benefit from it. Now, no question spotting. Study Hub is good for the reading purpose and also for the practice purpose for self students I am mentioning here. So, you can go to the Study Hub and the bare minimum topics, bare minimum topics that you should read is chapter 1 and chapter 2. For the self study student, uh, I would say these are the two bare minimum topics that everybody should read. Even my paid students can read these two chapters despite being covered. But it will be good for your section A OTs, okay? But uh, the other self-study students who are studying on their own, other than these two topics, they should read, I would say, uh, areas that I don't know, depending where, how preparation, how good preparation you have, but still you should read this pricing topic uh, and you should read uh, 
transfer pricing if if you're not good at transfer pricing okay uh, and budgets system this is related to theory so that should help you okay but it all depends on how much weak you are in certain area but these are the two mandatory that i would recommend all of you to read because three to four ot's will be connected from these areas okay so i hope this is clear to all of you so far now the today's topic that i'll be relieving re revealing to you people is regression and correlation budgeting and control now these topics are very important very crucial last time i did time series in the webinar so those who will those who want to cover time series they can watch my previous june 24 webinar this time i'm targeting regression and correlation and once you watch to the two webinars your uh, area of regression and time series will be done i have seen a lot of students struggling uh, in 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 uh, this area last attempt the question came and i was so much sad to see the remarks of the student that we didn't know what to do how is that possible man how is that possible it's a it's it's an area which you do cover in your previous examination but i'm very unfortunately saying that students are badly struggling i don't know what level of f2 classes they have taken before their basics are not good so i will try my best to help you in this webinar the previous june webinar includes time series area and today i'll be doing regression and correlation okay after that we'll switch toward decision making and in decision making we will be looking at a uh, pricing area and if we have the time then we'll move towards planning and operational from the variances point of view okay done okay i'll get back to that slide of chapters you can see chapter one and two are the two important that you should read okay done great guys so let's begin the discussion for today and let's start first with regression now these slides will be available to you on uh, our uh, the group that i mentioned earlier okay and uh, you can uh, get these slides from the group uh, so let's move on regression analysis guys what regression analysis is about what regression does <clears throat> so please concentrate and listen what i'm saying here see regression is a method first of all we can call regression as least square method as well last attempt i remember there were students sir least square method came in the paper it's regression nothing else now regression is used for multiple purposes number one through regression you can separate fixed and variable cost this was also done by high low method okay so regression can also do the same thing for you plus regression is also used for forecasting purpose okay for forecasting purpose right because of this topic i have recorded new videos for my paid students i have recorded new videos for my paid students purposefully and in my revision batch also have included these new videos so those who are part of the revision batch they can even benefit so that it becomes easy for everyone to cover regression and time series in a detailed way okay obviously today i'll try to summarize this so regression is used for separating fixed and variable cause for forecasting purposes because it uses a method known as least square method and through this it helps you in forecasting it helps in separating fixed and variable costs okay now the most important thing that regression will do especially for forecasting forecasting is regression will help you to find out trend now what is trend people say we don't know what trend is a very simple thing a very simple thing 
For example, I'll make a graph for you people, and there are two things y and x axis, y and x, okay. For example, it's about total cost and units, okay. Uh, I have plotted a data of previous quarters or months or something like that where for different units different cost is what I plotted here for previous 10 quarters for example 5 quarters for example okay now I wanted to know that this graph where I have plotted different points for cost and units I wanted to know the average of these, kind of an average. For that, <coughs> I want to draw a trend. Now, this trend is what you can draw through observation. Now, if you look at the data here, so for this data, I need an average line. So, this average line would be approximately in between this data. I can draw this by hand, okay. <clears throat> and why I need this trend line? Because I need to forecast in future, okay. So I can draw this trend line by hand, but because it's by hand, and I'm a human, and I'm subject to mistakes, and my hand shivers when making a line, not mine, maybe yours. <laughs> So, I can say that this line is not accurate. So, how to come up to this accurate line? Regression. Through regression equation here, this one, you can come up to this trend line. This equation will make a trend line for you. So, if you look at this graph here, Again, you can see a scattered diagram sort of a thing, different points plotted. But you can see a line in between these, an accurate one, is a one that have been made through this regression equation. That's it. So, regression, I know is useful for separating fixed and variable cost. But for forecasting purpose, regression will give you a trend line, a mean line. An average line that will help you to forecast. That's it. So, how to come up to this line? For that, you need to come up to an equation. And what equation is? Y is equal to A plus BX. Okay. So, how to derive the values of A and Bs? It's very simple. This is the equation <coughs> where you have Y here as a dependent variable. Yeah, there are, there are two variables and regression is actually a one that will model this relationship through an equation. And second is x. Okay. So, x is an independent variable like units. Like dependent variable is cost. As the units increases, the cost increases. The less the units, the less the cost. The more the units, the more the cost. So, the independent variable is x and dependent is y. Done? Okay. Now, what else? You need to find out the value of a. You need to find out the value of b. This is the formula of b. This is the formula of a. Once you have value of a and b, you can, you can model the equation. You can make the equation. Okay, you can model the equation. Now, what a is? A is what? We call a as y-intercept. Y-intercept. Mathematically. What b is? We call b as slope. Mathematically, slope. Okay. 
<coughs> now what is y intercept and what is slope so if i go back to the graph this is the trend line you can see here yes now if this is this is your y intercept this is your y intercept means this is a means value of value of x i beg your pardon value of y when x is 0 so you can see here here x is 0 and you are getting a value of 200 for y this is a this is y intercept and we also call this as fixed cost a is also fixed cost you can call it at fixed cost we can call this as y intercept now you guys know fixed cost is a cost that is even if you don't make a single unit you incur this fixed cost true clear okay now what is b b is the slope gradient now you can see a rising trend a rising trend this is slope this is b this is gradient mathematically mathematically <coughs> You can even call this as variable cost per unit. Variable cost per unit. Variable cost per unit. Okay. Variable cost per unit. So B is variable cost per unit. You can call this as slope or gradient as well right so this line is what regression will come up to and it will give you the values of a and b a is a fixed cost b is a variable cost if 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 you are dealing with total cost if you are dealing with total cost it is not compulsory that two variables will be given to you and always one will be total cost and always y will be total cost no it could be any two variables any other thing as well like sales like sales and advertising expenditure sales and advertising expenditure so in that case a will not be the fixed cost because it's an advertising expenditure and sales now what is the dependent variable so dependent variable is sales the more the advertisement the more the sales so in that scenario in that scenario we will call a as fixed sales if it is a cost so we will call this as fixed cost which means whatever is the dependent variable a will be that if dependent variable is total cost so a will be fixed cost if dependent variable is sales a will be fixed sales <coughs> similarly b if dependent variable is total cost so we'll call this as variable cost per unit but if dependent variable is sales, so we'll say variable sales per dollar of advertising expenditure. Per dollar of advertising expenditure. So that is variable sales. So my friends, mathematically, A is known as Y intercept, B is known as slope. If the dependent variable y, 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 y is a cost, so A will become fixed cost, B will become variable cost per unit. If it is sales, 
So A will be known as fixed sales and B will be known as variable sales per one dollar of X. Okay. So this is how we determine what A and B's are. Once we have this equation, once we have this trend line, once we have this equation, once we have this trend line, then we can forecast based on this line. We can forecast. <clears throat> Sir, how will we forecast? Friends, it's very simple. Y, for example, is total cost. A is fixed cost. B is variable cost. X is units. Now, once I have the value of B, once I have the value of A, so I can forecast. For example, tell me the cost at 40,000 units. I'll put 40 instead of X. Tell me the cost at 50,000 units. I'll put 50,000 units instead of X. I'll get the cost for 40,000. I'll get the cost for 50,000. I'll get the cost for 60,000. This is forecasting. At any level of units, you can work out the cost. At any level of units. See? So, as I said earlier, that regression is useful for identifying fixed and variable costs. Very basic explanation of regression. Mainly it is used for forecasting and how it does? It identifies a trend by an equation and once you have this equation, you can forecast because Y is dependent, X is independent. For any value of independent X, you can work out Y. For any value of independent X, you can work out Y. Okay. Last and one more example. <coughs> if for example, guys, if for example, Y is sales, X is advertising expenditure. I wanted to forecast my sales. If I spend $40,000, how much will be my sales? I can work out that. Instead of X, I'll put 40,000. If I spend $50,000 on advertising expenditure, what will be my sales? I can work out that. I have the value of fixed sales. I have the value of variable sales per dollar. So here, I'll input 50,000 and I'll work out the value of sales. For example, my fixed sale is 1,000. No matter, I don't spend on advertisement, I'll get 1,000. Plus, my variable sales is 5 per $1 I spend on advertising expenditure. Now, I want a forecast sales. If I spend 100 on advertisement, 100 on advertisement. So, 100, if I spend per $1, I get 5 sales. So, 500 variable sales, 1000 fixed sales, 1500 will be my forecasted sales. Forecasted sales. I am fed up by listening to the feedbacks of the student, so we don't know what to do for regression, correlation, time series. Hello, what are you saying? Your bases are weak. Done? So, regression is a tool to forecast and it works out the value of A and B by least square method. It's a mathematical method, man. Least square method. That's it. Is this clear to all of you? Come on, reply me in the chat box. Say yes or no. Easy. Clear. Is this, has this been fixed somewhere in your mind now? Good. Good. 
good and your friends who struggled last time tell them to watch this video on our youtube channel and also the june webinar so that they can watch time series as well i salute to all of the students who say we don't know what to do and they have passed their ma paper and to the respective faculties as well <laughs> anyways let's move on done guys concept is clear regression <laughs> hamza i am angry because i have seen lot of comments from the student in the last attempt when regression came when time series came they were like sir we don't know what to do okay <clears throat> now let's begin with a question and uh, let's see what to do certain tips to solve section c question remember a section c question will require 36 minutes in 36 minutes you have to solve section c question okay will require 36 minutes to solve a question Okay, time management is very crucial, very crucial, time management, right? So, keep this in your mind, that 36 minutes I have, I have to solve it in 36 minutes, that's it. Second thing, to understand section C well, you need to understand the verbs and the objects in the requirements. How many verbs there are, how many objects there are. That's why I've mentioned that. Watch the Wifi's YouTube channel for the verbs and objects, uh, a video by the name of examinable verbs. Okay. Use this spreadsheet to optimum. Now, anything that comes out of the box, we don't know what to do on spreadsheet. Common sense. Common sense. Spreadsheet is a is, is an asset for you. Learn how to use basic spreadsheet. That's it. The use of brackets are very important. In the calculations, if you don't use the brackets properly, you might do something wrong. Okay? For the calculation aspect. A basic normal presentation on spreadsheet is needed. That's it. For theory, we will cover theory mostly tomorrow in the next day of webinar, where I will focus a lot on theory. We'll tell you how to draft the theory as well. But theory is something that you have to write by linking with the scenario. Scenario. Or CRQs, if the theory is an application based, there are two types. Two types. One is knowledge based, one is application based. If some theory is an application based theory, link with the scenario. Focus should be on gaining easy marks, easy numbers. There are easy calculations to be performed. There are easy theory areas that you can do and grab marks. Focus on easy calculations, easy marks. Okay? That I'll tell you as we proceed with the questions. And last thing, this is for you people to read. Write what you know or write what examiner wants you to write. Come on, tell me. Come on. Write what you know or you want to write or what examiner wants you to write. 
no reply in the chat box. Examiner. For that, it's crucial to understand verbs, objects, and write according to the examination. So, theoretical area will be dealt in a more detailed way in the tomorrow's webinar. Today, let's start with the first past paper question and a very latest one. So, here we are. It's performance management March, June 2024 exam question. March, June 2024 exam question. And let's learn how to use spreadsheet to solve this question. Every time when you start a question of CRQ for PM, just skim through the requirements very quickly and find verbs and objects. Highlight verbs and objects. Okay. So let's do it. Using least square regression. My friends, this is regression. Regression uses a method that is known as least square. Okay. Using least square regression based on quarterly data for 20x2 and 20x5. Calculate is the verb. Expected staff days in quarter 4. What are you doing? You are forecasting. You are forecasting the days in quarter 4. That's it. You are using regression to forecast. Regression forecasting means work out, trend, uh, 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 come to a trend. That you will do through an equation y is equal to a plus bx. For that what you need to do? Find out the value of b, find out the value of a and that's it. Yes, in regression we will always consider the dependent variable and the independent variable. That will vary every time. That will change. It will not be always total cost and units. No, it can be anything else. Okay, done. <clears throat> verb is to calculate. Verb is to calculate and object is what? Expected staff days. Second, assume your answer to A gave you a figure of 30,000. <coughs> oh. The examiner report says that students were not able to solve. A well. Guys, be smart. Be smart enough to understand the techniques. If your part A answer, you don't know how to work out, forget it, leave it, move on. They have given you a chance to solve B without the help of A. Assume that your answer to A, one gave you 30,000. <laughs> they are asking you to assume 30,000. If you are not able to solve it, leave it and move on. They gave you the answer is, for example, 30,000. Based on this figure, verb is calculate. Calculate what? Object number one, revenue. Object number two, staff cost. Object number three, gross profit for quarter four. If anyone who was who, who didn't solve A, who was clueless for A, come on, you can solve B automatically. That's your main domain of costing. How do you calculate revenue? Selling price into number of units. How do you work out gross profit? Revenue minus cost. Okay, third, calculate is another verb. <coughs> calculate is another verb. Correlation coefficient R between total events and the staff days. Okay. That is correlation coefficient is, is what you have to work out. Simple. R for two marks. 
done with 11 marks let's move and see what next we want to do briefly examinable verb briefly discuss briefly discuss is a verb what limitations of regression for 3 marks sir we were not able to write the limitations why it's a simple drawbacks <clears throat> okay next briefly sorry discuss examinable verb discuss <coughs> three factors verb is discuss three factor is the object discuss three factors the board should consider when deciding whether to increase the hourly wage rate from 11.25 to 11.57 as the hr director suggests for six months theory using common sense common sense done with 20 marks it's the most easiest question one can get an examination honestly speaking and i'll prove that as well let's go back <coughs> once highlighted verbs and objects once highlighted verbs and objects if you're not clear what objects are and what verbs are do watch the uh, video of examinable verb you guys know okay now let's read the scenario are you with me everyone a quick yes please okay you can't see the question i just i seen a comment here can't see the question okay <clears throat> uh should i just make it more visible like this is it better now please kindly confirm <coughs> this is the max i can do okay let's read <coughs> the company v when hosp is an agency which supplies temporary staffing, temporary staff providing catering and hospitality services for events at stadium venues in DLAB. Okay. Uh, come on, please focus here. Demand for when hosp staff or company V depends on the number of events taking place and whether and whether a venue selected sorry and and whether a venue selects company v to supply staff for its events okay as such there is a strong correlation correlation the term correlation is relationship strong correlation means it's a good correlation uh, between the two variables and maybe it could be positive maybe it could be negative that is not clear but strong correlation is written here between the total number of events taking place in a period and the number of staff supplied by v company so it seems to be a positive strong relationship as one goes up the other will also go up okay <clears throat> there is an intense competition between temporary staffing agencies in dland competition is high <clears throat> all the agencies charge similar rates for, for the staff they provide and there is a little scope for agency to increase the price. So, you cannot increase the price. That's clear. The company average charge out rate for its staff was 16 per hour. <clears throat> okay. And the rate is expected to remain unchanged for 20x6. The company pays its staff 11.5 per hour. 11.5 per hour okay <clears throat> and on average <clears throat> they work eight hours <clears throat> per event they they are only paid for hours they work by the law staffing agency in deal and also have to make an additional contribution okay that's that's a new thing 
directly to the government at a rate of 10% on the amount they pay to their staff. Okay, that's a cost. The legal minimum wage in D land was 10.5 minimum wage, okay, per hour, but increased to 11 per hour, but increased to 11 per hour from the start of 20x6. In recent years, there was there has been shortage of workers prepared to work as temporary staff, including in hospitality services in DLAN. Shortage is there, man. Shortage. Because the work is seen physically demanding and relatively poorly paid. The company's HR director has suggested that the amount the company pays its staff should increase to 11.75. So right now, how much are they paying? They are paying, they are paying 11.25. Okay. And the minimum is 10.5. Okay, in 20x5, and now it's 11. The minimum wage is 11 now. The executive of FISA opposes the increase, saying it will reduce the profits. Obviously, the cost goes up, the profit will go down. But the HR director has argued that any decisions about period need to take into account ethical issues and not just financial ones. The company produces quarterly forecasts for its expected revenues and staff. Expand revenue and stuff. They have already produced, they have already been produced, they have already been produced for quarters 1 and 3 for 20x6, but not for quarter 4. 20x6. The total number of stadium events scheduled for quarter 4 are 140. Now, these are the stadium events that are scheduled for 20x6, okay? The CEO has asked you to prepare the forecast for quarter 420x6. Fine. What you have to do? Forecast for quarter 420x6. You have to prepare a forecast, okay? Using least square regression to forecast the demand for staff days expected in the quarter. So, what exactly do we have to forecast first here? Staff days in quarter 4 x 6. What will be the staff days based on their current rates of pay? Okay. A staff day constitutes one member of temporary staff being provided to a client for a day. You can see the numbers in the calculations here. And you will be surprised that. The calculation that you need for A and B as per regression, A and B as per regression, it says regression analysis, what should come to your mind is Y is equal to A plus BX. So, submission X is given, submission Y is given, submission X square is given, submission Y square is given. Submission x into y is given. What else you need? What else you need? They have done the calculations for you. You just have to form an equation of y is equal to a plus bx by finding the value of a and b. That's it. One of the most easiest question in this world. This is based on a sample size of n is 16. Pairs of data is 16. That this is the data which CO wants you to use for least square calculation in A1. Are you with me, everyone? Yes or no? <clears throat> okay. We have to do the calculations on spreadsheet. What I want to do here first is I just have to copy paste the numbers here. That is submission X is one five one seven five seven. Now 
just realize one thing what is x and what is y so total number of events total number of staff days okay so what is x and what is y what do you think is dependent on what come on it's obvious right now but still i'm asking x is what total number of events the more the events the more the staff days so staff days staff days are dependent variable staff days are dependent on events so x is events staff days y okay okay so submission x 1575 submission y submission x square submission y square it's a huge long number submission x y i hope i copying this correct figures okay done so submission x submission y submission x square submission y square and submission xy right no need to write the formula the formula of this will be given to you in the examination itself okay i am just writing these figures for my calculation is what i want is y is equals to a plus b x so i need to find out the value of b first and then the value of a okay now for b the formula is what i have to use here and that's it i have to use the formula that's it okay now here we have the formula for b here is the formula <coughs> okay and yes uh, i think i i can copy paste this control c control v yeah i can copy paste <laughs> yeah good anyways okay now the value of b is what i find i i want to found, find out first now what i can do to make my calculations up look easy i can find out the numerator and denominator separately okay let's start with numerator first pairs of data 16 into submission x and y you will be given with the formula there the formula if is something you can learn as well will be given no not a problem okay so submission x and y okay close minus submission x here yeah, into submission y you can see everything is well connected the formula is also there i'm solving the numerator first here this is the numerator 
okay numerator done not a problem easy okay it's a it's a it's a big number that's why it's not visible done denominator mr denominator okay denominator what is the formula here it is n is pairs of data submission x square minus submission x whole square is equals to 16 brackets are important 16 into submission x square minus submission x power whole square right now numerator divide by denominator will give you value of b b done b done now value of a okay what's the formula average mean y minus b into average mean x how to find out y a submission y divided by n submission x divided by n okay right so let's find out this is what i can solve here as well by opening the brackets submission y here is the figure divide by 16 bracket close minus the value of b b okay multiplied by multiplied by submission x divided by 16 okay everyone clear so you can see the numbers you can see the calculations and the answer is 722.1 and that is negative okay it's possible to come up with negative answers it's not that we have done something wrong yeah the answers can come negative here it is done through clear no problem yes or no nothing okay so i have the equation now y is equals to y is equals to a is already available b is here into x this is y is equal to a plus bx now you can forecast now you can forecast what exactly do i want to forecast the staff days say yes or no yes okay what is y staff days what is x number of events number of events so in the question in the question number of events expected in quarter 4 are 114 are 114 yes or no yes so can i work out the dependent variable y number of expected staff days come on say yes or no guys i can so let's work out Here, number of <coughs> staff days formula this plus this into one one four one hundred fourteen. This is forecasting as per regression. 
independent variable independent variable is used for forecasting the dependent variable okay Guys, the answer is 26515. Let's round it off. Okay, done. 26515 days. So, regression analysis used for forecasting here, and it's very simple. You have to figure out the dependent variable, the independent variable. The dependent variable in this data was number of staff days. Why? independent is events so i worked out a and b values from this data and now i input it 114 events are expected as written in the question so if there are 114 events expected in quarter 4 26 how many staff days will be required 26505 using a very simple formula of a plus bx Okay. Okay, now <clears throat> let me look at the questions. Now what are the questions? Let's let's have a look. How can't get how staff days came okay it's very simple <clears throat> value of a and b is what i was given here x is independent variable okay so the independent variable is number of events and staff days is dependent variable you need to understand dependent is y independent is x Okay, how can I put 114 in place of X? Sorry, I, yeah, I just put 114 in place of X because X is independent. Okay. So, Ali, you just answered your question automatically. 114 is what? The independent variable. Okay. How did I know? Dependent, independent. Very simple. X is always independent. Y is always dependent. Bhumi, just remember this one thing. X is always independent. Y is always dependent. <coughs> okay. And by the formula, it is very much simple as well. That The formula is very simple. Y is equals to A plus BX. So, actually what are we finding is Y. So, anything that we are finding is dependent. Okay. If we would have taken the example advertising and sales. So, advertising would have been X. And sales would have been Y. Okay, Ali. Sir, what the value of A? Sir, what the value of A? Okay, value of A is minus 772.14. This is the value of A. This is the value of A. See, there is a 
understood understood it's not a fixed cost first of all it's not a fixed cost sheikh abu bakar it's not a fixed cost i told you if <coughs> one variable is if y is total cost then we can say fixed cost if y is not a cost related thing so i cannot say this fixed cost it's a y intercept i can say okay and the answer is negative that's it just take it negative right okay we have added but the value of a is negative so how would i add if a is minus in minus so how will i add see my formula minus plus is minus okay suleiman right so i hope this is clear to all of you guys ali haider you need to contact me personally please because your questions uh, are a big basic one i feel like that your concepts for regression are not clear so abu bakar uh, sorry ali haider ali haider please do message me then okay guys so far understood the calculations everyone yes or no clear easy great <clears throat> let's take a short break and after the break we'll continue with the same question we'll continue with the same question and let's continue after that all my paid students and the revision students i've recorded new content for time series regression and correlation you guys must watch if you are still unclear the paid ones i'm talking about but general self study students i've given you enough knowledge here so that you can at least solve the question in the given time let's now move towards the next requirement guys your round your answer to the nearest full day and that what i have done 26515 is what i've rounded out to the full day uh, the next requirement is for four marks which says assume that the answer to a1 is 30000 even though my answer is 26 something but now for this part b they want me to use uh, the the figure of 30000 okay they are asking me to work out uh, now the first part was for 5 marks imagine so great man it's it's easy 5 mark second is for 4 marks where they want me to work out the value of forecasted revenue staff cost and gross profit margin uh, so for that let's start with part b here guys be with me everyone now first thing is revenue second is staff wages okay then uh yeah i they want me to work out gross profit okay gross profit now for revenue what is required everyone let's have a look here uh for revenue they charge they charge 16 per hour <clears throat> they charge 16 per hour in 20xx and the number of days staff days that they will work we have already found out that is 60 uh, 30000 and uh, the per hour rate that they charge is 16 and how many hours they work is 8 okay so guys 30000 the number that they have asked me to use into 16 into 8 right everyone are you with me okay so the revenue is 3840 000 i have used here 30000 because they have asked me to use 30000 okay staff wages in negative will work out 30000 days into 
the per hour that we pay to the staff currently is 11.25 so 30000 into 11.25 8 hours they work and the answer to staff wage is 2 2.7 million now there is one more thing that i have to add here for my gross profit calculation and that is the additional that we pay to the government that we pay to the government which is 10 percent of the amount of the staff pay so whatever we pay to staff the 10 percent of that is what we pay to the government additional contribution to the government okay so contribution to the government is 10 percent negative into 0 0.10 guys are you with me right so 10 percent is what we'll pay to the government that i have to show in negative okay minus minus positive is what they did okay clear everyone done right uh gross profit some formula can't be easier than this for four marks can't be easier than this for four marks <laughs> seriously seriously 10th option 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 9 10 oh man i missed it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 done so you can see everything now in commas and numbers in brackets the gross profit has been worked out for four marks simple even if anybody did their part a wrong anybody who did their part a wrong can easily solve part b because the expected number of uh staff days that you had to use was thirty thousand. Four marks very 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 simple very simple even if you are not able to solve part a you can solve part b like this four marks that is the issue ali see pm is not difficult by reading the question you will figure out you have to read the question now it's all about your english understanding see 16 where 16 is yeah the company average charge out rate charge out rate is 16 per hour the charge out rate means what they charge to the uh, customers okay so it's so easy it was so easy honestly but the confusion the the tension all these things make this massively difficult okay done four marks simple four marks first part was easy second was easy third calculate correlation coefficient between the total number of events in dland and the company staff day based on quarterly data for 20x2 and 20x5 before that What is correlation? Identifies how strong the relationship between two variables. It could be units and total cost relationship. It could be sales and advertising expenditure relationship. It could be what we just saw. Number of events and number of expected staff days. Relationship between two variables. Relationship between X and Y. So there are different types of relationship it could be a positive correlation it could be a negative correlation it could be perfect positive perfect negative or no correlation at all 
relationship between two variables. Okay. So, let us recap how to find out this correlation is through this formula. Now, everything to this of this formula is same as the value of B that you find out in regression except, except this and the under root. The rest all is same. All is same. The working that you did for B and what you are getting here is exactly same except for the value of Y calculation and the under root. That's it. Okay. So, through this you find out the coefficient correlation. How strong, weak the correlation is. Now, if you look at the graphs here, a perfect positive correlation will show you a straight line and all the points will be on that line. Perfect positive. Answer will be exactly 1. Okay. Perfect negative. Answer will be exactly 1 but negatively represented. Positive correlation means one go up, other will go up. Negative correlation means one will go up, other will go down. If it is perfect, which means the change in the proportion is exactly the same. If one is going up by two, the other will go up by two. Perfect positive. If one is going up by two and other is going down by two, perfect negative correlation. So, in case of perfect, all the points will be on the same line, trend line. No correlation between the variables. Scatter diagram. We can't see the points close to line. Even close to line, the points will not be there. Okay. If it is not perfect, if it is not perfect, but the line is an increasing trend. Increasing trend means one is increasing, other is also increasing, but not with the same proportion. It is positive. If one goes up by 5, the other goes up by 4. But it is not perfect. And yeah, X will change by 5. So Y will change by 4. The dependent will be changed by 4. So, this is a sign where the answer could be between 0 and plus 1. 0 and plus 1. Okay. And if just in case 1 goes up by 5, x goes up by 5 and y goes down by 3, down by 2, down by 4. So, we will say this as negative correlation not perfect negative correlation and in that case the answer will be between negative 1 and 0 negative 1 and 0 okay so no correlation answer is 0 perfect positive correlation answer is 1 perfect negative correlation answer is negative 1 And if it is in between, we will say this as positive or negative correlation. So, my friends, remember positive 1, 0, negative 1 is the range. If in between these two, we will say negative correlation. If in, if in between these two, we will say positive correlation. If it is totally minus 1, we will say perfect negative correlation. If it is exactly 1, we will say perfect positive correlation. If it is 0, we will say no correlation. <laughs> okay. So, before I move, simple. If 1 goes up by, if x goes up by 2, y goes up by 2, it is perfect positive. Number 2. If x goes up by 2, y goes up, goes down by 2, it is perfect negative. If x goes up by 2 and y goes up by 1, 
Come on, you tell me. You tell me what I'll what I will call this as positive correlation. If get if x goes up by five and y goes down by four, four, what we'll call this as negative correlation. Come on. Done. And zero is no correlation. Okay. Is the recap enough, everyone? Done. <clears throat> Let's go back and find the answer. The calculations are right at the top. The numbers, I'll just copy those for this next part, which I can say as part C. I'll paste these all and will perform my calculation as per the formula of R. Again to make my life easier, easier, I will do the calculation of numerators and denominators separately so that it does not affect my final answer. Okay. Now, This is the formula, numerator, submission x 16 into submission xy, I hope this is the correct figure I am taking, submission xy, yeah, minus, no, 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 still, this is not submission xy, submission xy, let me show you from the question. Yeah, there it is. The last one. This one. Okay. <clears throat> okay, minus submission x into submission y. That's the same numerator I'm getting. Denominator. Mm, under root is also there. Fine. Okay. So, 16 into submission x square minus submission x power whole square. Okay. Okay, x side done, I have to multiply this now. I am done with x, so I have to multiply this. 16 into submission y is what I will be using here. Minus submission, uh, I beg your pardon, submission y square is what I have to use here. Submission y square is this huge big amount. Okay, into submission y whole square. Close the brackets. Everyone, are you with me? Okay, so denominator calculation done. This was your numerator, right? This is your denominator. Done. Once we have the value of denominator, I will apply under root here of 0.5. And once that is done, this numerator divide by denominator will give you 
that I can round off and this is 0 0.8 as my correlation coefficient <clears throat> right so numerator I can show separately denominator working I can show separately and creating all the links very important by guys you cannot solve this on calculator it's a big sin to calcul use calculator here you have to make sure that you do solve this on spreadsheet with proper links as I have showed you here. Okay. For under root, you can use the power value and multiply that with 0 0.5. For under root, multiply with 0 0.5. Okay. Are we done? Okay. I can do the under root calculation at the previous step as well. Just see here. For example, if you don't want to do this step, if you want to skip this step, you can skip this step properly. See what you'll do. I'm just removing this step and my previous calculation here. The use of brackets is important. Open the bracket. Close the master bracket, power 0.5. Okay. So, here also I can do the calculation in the previous step as well and we will get 0.8. Okay. So, this is numerator, proper calculation of numerator. This is denominator. Everything you have to show in the spreadsheet, please. Proper calculation of denominator and here it is. So, I showed you the entire way to easily solve that on spreadsheet. Okay. And yes, under root is equals to power 0.5. Done. So, I hope this is clear to you people. Under root is equals to power 0.5 done correlation coefficient r is 0 0.8 now if this is 8 0 0.8 what it means is it a positive answer yes so when it is a positive answer what we will call this as positive positive correlation positive correlation is it perfect one no this is not perfect it's a positive correlation Okay, done. Are we clear everyone? Yes, you can do the calculation in one cell as well. If you want to, you can calculate in one cell as well. Not, there is not any need to show numerator, denominators. You can do calculation one cell as well if you can manage it properly okay so this is also clear it's allowed to do calculation in one cell as well but sometimes it's good to break in two parts so that you don't do any small mistake because any small mistake can affect the answer anyways done 11 marks completed i hope this is clear to all of you moving towards the next requirement briefly discuss limitations of regression analysis there are two types of questions one is knowledge based one is application based this is what knowledge based where there is nothing to relate with scenario as such no name of the scenario is given to you in the question are you with me so simply briefly discuss the limitations of regression the drawbacks of regression the limitation of regression is what you have to write here okay now <clears throat> For the limitations of regression, for the limitations of regression, guys, what is important to remember? So, just let's have a recap. Disadvantages assumes linear relationship between two variables, straight line relationship between two variables, x and y. 
it is that it may not be linear okay secondly we always say that y is dependent on x is it is it compulsory no y may be dependent on other factors as well it's not just total cost is dependent on units the total cost might change because of inflation okay plus extrapolation is what we do we forecast into the future we forecast into the future okay so again it's not that whatever has been happened in the past will simply continue in the future things can change right we assume every thing that has happened in the past will straight away continue in the future that's not the case okay with me everyone right so three factors sorry briefly discuss limitations now uh part i don't know which part is this part b okay following are the limitations of regression guys okay now this is knowledge based yes this is knowledge based nothing to link with the scenario are you clear about this one okay we'll write in form of paragraphs the first point is linear relationship okay you have to write briefly about it because the verb is briefly discuss briefly discuss so you to discuss this point okay so what we'll write here assumes linear relation ship between y and x okay however it may not be the case in actual done second point other variables guys are you with me now what i can add under this the regression considers that x that y is dependent on x however the However, change in Y could also be due to other factors like inflation. Done? Are you with me, everyone? Simple. Third point extrapolation forecasting forecasting may be inaccurate as extrapolation assumes all happened in past will continue in future which may not be the case 
okay situations can change in future right so the simple drawbacks of regression you have to mention here that's it clear everyone done okay i hope this is clear not at all difficult extrapolation is less reliable than interpolation because in extrapolation we uh, go outside our uh, data set or the range to predict right that's it so you simply have to mention the drawbacks of regression this is knowledge base no linking required three marks done Knock. next discuss is the verb three factors that the board should consider when deciding whether to increase early rate from 11.25 to 11.75 as hr director has suggested six marks okay six marks requirement part c three factors to consider now you can take a massive help from the scenario scenario okay in scenario there are certain points available that i can definitely use and uh, can discuss that number one then the most important is i have seen here three factors to the the board should consider okay okay the first factor can you tell me will will be what i just have to give you some hints if i can find out that uh, is here. here 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 yeah that ceo the first factor is what it's common sense man the first factor is what profit will be reduced the first factor is profit the impact on profit okay the impact on profit this is a six mark requirement the verb is to discuss okay now first is impact impact on profits okay now first of all can you tell me what impact on profit will be we are currently paying 11.25 okay and uh, we then have to pay we then have to pay 11.75 okay so what will be the increase what will be the increase guys profit will reduce now can you work out the impact so the financial impact is as follows now let's do a quick math here staff days are 60 30000 into 11.75 is what we'll pay now previously we'll pay we were paying 11.25 are you with me everyone yes or no so the additional that i'm paying is just 0.5 right into how many hours eight hours eight hours so can I work out the impact guys? I can. 0. 0.5 into 30,000 into 8. Okay. 120,000. Cost will increase. 
I don't know whether you are following me or not. Is that right? But remember, there is one more charge that I have to consider. That 10% that we pay to the government. If this increases, that 10% will also increase. Agreed? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. So, number two, additional contribution to government 10% 120,000 into 0.1 is 12,000 okay total total increase in staff cost will be 132,000 and hence profit will reduce profit will reduce by 132,000 with me everyone yes or no easy Okay, so should both consider this? Yes. Board should consider this and its impact okay on overall profits as admin cost is not given currently we don't have other administration cost okay we don't know our other cost if after deducting this, if there are some other costs, we don't know whether we'll be in profits or not. This is what we have to see. Done. First is impact of on profit. Okay, now because I need three points, so I can use this as a heading. Okay, I can use this as a heading. I'll make it bold. Done. Second. Guys, can you tell me the second thing to consider? What second thing should we consider? What second thing the board should consider? Yes. Any ideas? Yeah. Staff attraction. Staff attraction should be considered. Now, maybe as the HR person says, as the HR person says that short term financial gains should not be considered. Okay. As the HR manager considers that short term financial gains should not be considered increase will help to attract good resources in future okay and also will 
help to retain existing staff. Do you agree with me everyone? Yes or no? Is that right to say? Because there is staff shortage here and you cannot lose people leaving the organization. Okay? Due to staff shortage, it's important to retain existing staff who may shift to competitors in case the wage rate is higher. Yes guys, agreed everyone. Now, those students who are like we should write in form of bullets. So guys, you don't have to write in form of bullets. You have to write in form of paragraphs. In form of paragraphs. Okay. Done. Inform, so you can write this in one paragraph, okay? One paragraph, in form of paragraphs. Third, ethical and minimum wage. Okay, now, third point. See, the minimum wage has gone to 11 and we are paying 11.25. From the last year, it was 10.5 and went to 11. And we are paying 11.25. So, the minimum wage has also gone up. <clears throat> which means, definitely, there is inflation. Plus, because the work is demanding and they are poorly paid. So, if minimum wage has gone up, ethically, to motivate them, the company can think to rise the payment as well because compared to minimum wage we are paying 11.25 and the minimum is 11. Do you think it's a valid point? Yes or no? Okay, let's write in bullets but you'll write in paragraph form. Considering the minimum wage of 11 versus 11.25, a small increase in company V wages. The job is demanding and assuming Inflation, it seems ethical to increase pay so that staff is treated fairly. Guys, This question has nothing to do with any knowledge. It was just a simple question where you simply had to apply common sense. That's it. Done. Six marks, three headings in paragraph form is what you have to write. I hope this is clear to all of you. We are done with this complete question of 20 marks and I hope it was useful for you to understand recall, regression, correlation, forecasting and all of the general things. 
and yes let me tell you because this requirement this third requirement or c i would say this requirement was an application based question because this is related to scenario the board the hr director so this is an application based question so it was important to link with the scenario whereas the previous one had nothing to do with scenario no scenario name is given the previous one was an example of knowledge based whereas this is an application based okay done so that's it and uh, i hope this question definitely was useful for you happy everyone yes or no and those who attempted this question in the last attempt they are now very much clear that what went wrong sometimes due to pressure you guys make things difficult for yourself by the topic names you decide okay this will be difficult or this will be easy read the requirement man read the requirement don't judge it before solving it okay pricing part of decision making a topic that <clears throat> is a one where you learn to find out profit maximization point which you do through algebraic approach and tabular approach okay so it is important to find out an equation very much similar to what we covered in regression but not completely the same which is p is equals to a minus b q where again a is the price where demand is zero where b is gradient or slope okay sorry a plus b q where P is price and Q is quantity demanded. Right? So, this is known as the price function or the demand function. And the graph is like this, which means at price 1, this is the demand. If the price goes down, so demand should increase. Okay? So, this equation represents this graph. Now, the question can ask you to derive a demand function which you should know how to work out. Value of A, value of B. And a question may ask you to determine that at a certain quantity what will be the price or at certain price what will be the quantity so if you have the value of a and b you can do things easy this is known as price function or demand function okay now the question may ask you to find out a price where demand is, sorry, the question may ask you, calculate the price where profit will be maximized. So, you have to use two approaches, algebraic and tabular. Algebraic approach is MC is equal to MR, marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue and through this you can determine the price where profit will be maximized. Other is tabular approach. 
in our table form you will work out all the available revenue options the cost options and the profit options and you will automatically figure out wherever the profit is high that is the price you will decide okay clear okay two very common pricing strategies that the company can use and have to decide what they have to keep skimming what is skimming guys do you know what is skimming charging high prices at the initial stage of the product life cycle before i set this price i have to see whether i meet the conditions see meet the conditions like if the product life cycle is short grab the revenue at the initial phase increase the prices if the demand is inelastic now what is inelastic demand inelastic guys do you have any idea what is inelastic demand inelastic demand is no idea where the demand is not price sensitive yes a change in price will not result in a massive change in demand Right, demand is not price sensitive. Correct. So, how do we work out this price elasticity? How do we work out this price elasticity? Price elasticity. Percentage change in demand divided by percentage change in price is that correct known as price elasticity of demand yes or no yes so if the demand is inelastic we can set skimming because i know if i charge high prices demand will not be affected very nice next next where production is limited at the early stage okay so, if production is limited at the early stage, what connection it has, it will have with the price. See, uh, I know if I charge high prices, less people will come to me. So, I can manage my sales in that scenario. Okay. And when there are barriers for competitors, where competitors are not able to join easily in, in in your industry because the prices sorry you can set high prices then because you know nobody will come against you okay done another strategy is penetration charging low prices at the initial phase in the life cycle when to set when you have a huge market to acquire you when your target is to grab a higher market share come on let's drop the prices let's penetrate into the market okay when your price elasticity of demand answer is elastic demand then also when i know that a small dip in the price will give me huge increase in demand where demand is price sensitive okay when we want to discourage the competition we want to grab a higher market share and want to move from growth to move to growth and maturity phases now how would i know guys can you tell me how would i know demand is elastic or it is not elastic how would i know any idea yes okay no idea if the answer of price elasticity of demand is 
मोर देन वन वेरी नाइस मोर देन वन मोर देन वन इट्स इलास्टिक डिमांड एंड वेन दी आंसर इज लेस देन वन इट्स इन इलास्टिक डिमांड ओके राइट less than 1 it's in elastic demand more than 1 it is elastic demand correct everyone okay now ready for a section b question certain tips to follow candidates you do not read the questions actively scenario actively because section b remember 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 section b will have a scenario followed by five ot's five ot's and those five ot's are connected to the scenario number 2 you have to solve this in 18 minutes 18 minutes and remember there are five ot's i always say this there will be easy ot's available my friends easy ot's so solve the easy ot's first and grab marks maybe two would be theoretical one three would be calculative or it's it could be vice versa solve the easy ot's first and yeah yes you can solve question 5 first and then move to question 4 because in section b the answer of the previous one will not have an impact on the next one okay so solve the easy ot's first easy marks in my previous june webinar also i focused a lot on that once you will watch that you will further realize it yeah that's is it's very important okay easy ot's second as i said you have to consider the scenario and rounding off mistakes please avoid rounding off mistakes for fill in the blank questions okay so considering these tips guys are you ready so let's begin with section b question yes or no okay what are you asking sheikh abu bakar Yes, elastic demand means a change in the price will affect demand in a greater proportion. Okay, whereas inelastic means uh, there will be a change in the price, but demand will not be changed in a drastic proportion. There will be a smaller impact on the demand. Okay. uh here we are guys should we begin yes <clears throat> let's start with the question our company sells a range of fitness equipment makes and sells that are used in gyms and customer homes okay it currently produces a stationary fitness bicycle called q okay q the company also has been developing another type of stationary fitness bicycle called f okay which is about to launch it has commissioned some research which has established that a price of dollar 500 the demand for the f would be 20000 the research also noted that for every dollar 8 price increase in price demand is expected to fall by 1000 okay clear 
it also sells 48,000 sets of hand weights per year. Based on this activity, selling price and the cost information for the weights is as follows. The demand function for the hand weight is given to you. And 75,000 seats in inventory and want to sell them in the coming year. I just missed out on one information and here it is. The company has a demand function for Q which is given to me and a variable cost of 230. Okay guys, for section B it is must to read all the things given in section B scenario and then go towards the OTs. So let's solve the, the first one. Using the optimal pricing approach. Optimum pricing approach means uh, the price where profit is maximum. Okay. What should be the price for the company for product Q? Now the methods available are tabular approach and the algebraic approach. The question has given you a massive clear hint here. And the hint is by looking at company Q, the function demand function is given to me and the variable cost is given to me guys which approach should i use algebraic or the tabular one so it's very clear i have to apply mc is equals to mr approach here <laughs> okay okay so the demand function is 893 minus 0.009 q Okay. Is that right? Are we clear? Okay. Now, steps is what you have to remember. Step one was demand function. Step two for MR. 893 2BQ is what you have to do, right? So this will be 893 minus 0. 0. 0.018Q. Is that right, everyone? Okay. Now, replace MR with MC. Now, what is marginal cost? 230. Okay. Are we clear? Okay. Now, step 4. Quantity demanded is what I will work out. So, what is the quantity demanded? Profit maximizing quantity. It's 36,833. Is that right? Step 5. Using the price function. Work out the price. So, price is what I need to work out. 893 minus 0 0.009 into 36,833 will give me the answer of how much? 562, 562, clear, simple, totally simple, simple, yeah, marginal cost is your variable cost, if you see here, the variable cost is 230, that is your marginal cost, okay. Okay, so <clears throat> done. Second, based on the research commissioned, okay, what at what selling price would demand for company be zero to the nearest dollar? Fill in the blank. Okay, now <clears throat> company F details are given to me here, right? So what exactly they want me to work out? 
they want me to work out <coughs> price where demand will be zero and what is that that's a a a is what i need to work out current price <coughs> plus current quantity divided by change in quantity into change in price right right so let's look at the details given above so at a price of 500 the demand is 20000 for a change in price by a the demand varies by 1000 simple 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 i don't know why people say the paper is difficult these are the exam questions right i hope i've taken the correct figures here so what is the answer the answer to this part is 660 660 what else we want man what else we want F5 is not difficult. We make it difficult. <clears throat> okay? Done. 660. Next. If the company sets a selling price in order to sell 75,000 seats of hand weights in inventory, what will be the profit? Now you will, now we will test me to calculate profits. Huh? Okay. But for 75,000, I need to work out the profit. So I need the price first of all. So guys, what is given to me here? Here it is. For hand weights. 84 minus 0.001Q. 84 minus 0.001 Q. Okay. So it's 84 demand function minus 0.001 Q. Q, Q. So at a quantity of 75,000, they want me to work out the price. Yes or no? So, first of all, what I'll do? I'll see. That if I sell 75,000 or I want to sell 75,000, what should be the price? Can you work out the price for me for 75,000? So the price that I should keep should be 9. 9. Done. Now, they want me to work out the profit. Okay. So do I have the details about the cost? Yes, I think I have. Variable is 5. Fixed is 2 and I have 75,000 units, guys. Okay? In inventory, it sells 48,000 sets of handmaids per year. Now, this is per year um, units that are given to me here as well. Now, should what should I do? I can first work out the contribution. I have the variable cost here. Yes. Okay. I can work out the contribution. Total contribution. Guys, 9 is the selling price. 5 is the variable cost. 75,000 units is what I need to sell. So, what will be the contribution? 300,000. From this, I want to deduct the fixed cost. Yes or no? Yes. Fixed cost. So, fixed cost is given to me. Fixed 
fixed cost is given to me. How much is the fixed cost? 2. That's per unit. So, should I make this total? Yes. Should I multiply this with 75? Hello? Or with 48? Fixed cost doesn't vary with the number of units. For fixed cost, we use our normal activity level and that is 48,000. The one that we sell per year because we, we are using 48,000 to calculate the per unit fixed cost. Not with 75. 75 is what I have in inventory. It's not a variable cost. It's a fixed cost. Students have done this mistake by using 75,000. Use normal activity level, normal activity level, and that is 96,000. Answer is 204B. Small mistakes we do. Small mistakes. These are conceptual errors. These are conceptual errors. Forty-eight thousand is the normal activity level. How can you multiply this with seventy-five thousand units that you are selling? Always we calculate fixed cost per unit by using what total fixed cost divided by normal activity level. In a year, I sell 48,000 units. So, what is my per unit cost? 2. It's not a variable cost that you will multiply with 75,000 units that you have in inventory. Okay? 48,000 are the annual units we absorb on the basis of normal activity level. That's it. These are basics of MA. Right? Okay, done. Clear? Next, theory. As I told you, the company has also recently developed a new electronic fitness device for tracking individuals' daily activity. Okay? Which of the following facts about this new product should indicate market skimming pricing strategy would be suitable when it is launched? Now, what are the conditions of market skimming? Guys, read the statements. The fitness device has a three year life. Now, three-year life is a short life, okay? Short life. Skimming suits here. The company has incurred high development cost. You want to cover development cost quickly. You will charge high price. Yes, yes. The company wants to discourage new entrants into the market. No. For this, you need penetration pricing. Penetration. To discourage competition, you need penetration. Okay. The fitness device is currently at, is currently the first of its kind. It's a unique product. Unique. Yes. Skimming. Okay. So it's one, two, and four. Done? Done. Next, which of the following statements about pricing, price elasticity of demand is true? PED is measured as percentage change in price. Divide the percentage change in demand? Yes or no? No. It's opposite way around. It's opposite way around. Demand comes first and then the price. 
Okay? Wrong. If PED indicates the demand is elastic, elastic, which means demand is price sensitive, a change in price will have a greater impact on demand. So prices should be increased in order to maximize profit. Come on. If demand is price sensitive, so can I maximize the profit then? If I increase the price, will I be able to achieve maximum profit? The answer is no. Brother, the demand is elastic. If I change the price, my demand would drastically go down. And demand going down in a greater proportion to increase in price means my revenue will fall. My revenue will fall and I will not achieve maximum profit. So both are wrong. Both are wrong. Both. Okay. Clear? Understood? So the answer is C. And that's it for this question. I hope this is clear to all of you. Okay, someone asked me about the development costs. See, the high the development costs will be, I will try to charge a higher price so that I can recover my high development cost. Yes or no? That's why we go with skimming. Okay? Done? Nancy, good. That's it for today, guys. Did you enjoy the today's first day of webinar? Yes or no? Please, I need your feedbacks. How was the session in terms of confidence building, understanding, theory, calculation, spreadsheets? Yes, please. Did you enjoy it, everyone? No, price skimming will not discourage new competitors. No, 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 no. It will not discourage competition. If you keep low price, then it will discourage competition as, as you can easily grab the higher market. Okay? Happy, right? So, guys, see you tomorrow, day two, with new things to learn. And all your friends who are struggling in correlation regression and time series, ask them to watch September webinar as well as June webinar where I covered time series for the self study students who are doing self study. Who, don't, who doesn't have my lectures and those students who have my lectures, I've recorded the news lectures for these and you can just watch and enjoy and learn. I hope this is clear to all of you. Tomorrow topics are important, my friend. We'll be doing performance measurement. Okay. Performance measurement and the other areas as well. That's it. Thank you very much. See you then tomorrow. Take care. Bye.